Why, Tisha? <laughs> The Letitia Stoke trial is well underway for the murder of 11-year-old Gannon Stoke. We've recently heard testimony from Letitia's brother, Dakota Lowry. He took the stand just recently, and he did not want to be in court, and he was actually subpoenaed to be there. But his testimony was very powerful. He was visibly and audibly upset and expressed being angry at Letitia. But he also expressed what he thought about Letitia's state of mind and talked about the day he was in Colorado Springs wanting to search for Gannon and why and how that didn't happen. He was also witness to the suitcase, the one that Gannon was found in, but they missed something that day in court and that was connecting some dots. So today I'm going to talk about Dakota's testimony, the day he spent with Letitia and the missing information. So now let's get into it. Letitia's brother Dakota is 14 years younger than Letitia. He hadn't seen Letitia since 2020, four days after Gannon went missing and was murdered. On January 31st, he was helping Letitia move out of the Stoke residence. Letitia's daughter Harley was also with them that day and I recently did a video on her testimony and there were some bombshells in there. Dakota flew from North Carolina along with Letitia and Dakota's mom and their aunt. Their aunt rented a car, a Nissan Altima, while they were there and a cargo van. They took that van and used it to load up belongings of both Letitia and Harley from the Stoke residence. While they were loading the van, the police officers were looking in bags and in the pages of books it was reported. Now remember, Letitia was quickly becoming a suspect at this point, and it was within days of Gannon's disappearance and murder. In my previous video, I talked about how Letitia ran from the police. She also had a thousand different stories which didn't add up about Gannon's disappearance and she wasn't actively looking for Gannon and was focused on herself and how she was being framed. And the list goes on and on. While at the home, Dakota said he felt aggravated while he was at the house and he felt like the whole family were looked at as criminals. He didn't know what was going on at the time or the full story at that point. He just knew something was off. So they loaded up the suitcases, clothing, and the two dogs. Now at this point, there wasn't any sign of the big green suitcase that Gannon was found in. And later that day, Letitia did her ridiculous interview with her back turned. The message for Gannon I have is, Gannon, when you get here, you'll be able to truly tell what happened. And then I really hope I get a sincere apology from everyone who has made all those things, especially from my husband. Later after that, they went to the hotel and while she was there with her family, she told them she had to leave and needed to go get some dog food. Her brother thought it was odd though. He said while he was on the stand that it took so long for her to come back. He thought maybe she was just taking some time to herself maybe because of everything that was going on. But he said he even phoned his wife and mentioned that it's taking Letitia far too long and she should be back by now as it's just a quick task of getting some dog food. Now when Harley was on the stand, she said the same thing about the dog food. But she mentioned that Letitia was gone for two and a half hours and that when Letitia returned and was asked why it took so long, she said her GPS wasn't working and she got lost. But in both testimonies, it wasn't mentioned what Letitia was actually doing, which I wish in some way, you know, the way they structure these trials, that they would have you know, the next person come up and fill in the blanks and make it obvious because this next little bit is very, very important. And I feel like it would be important for the jury so that they can keep track and actually see what's going on in these gaps and connect it quickly and see even the higher level of manipulation from Letitia Stouch or Stouch as the defense attorneys call her over and over painfully. So Letitia goes to get some dog food, but the the arrest affidavit paints a very different story. Letitia used her aunt's rented Nissan Altima and she went for a drive, all right. And what Letitia didn't know, and thank goodness for detectives, because they placed a GPS on the Nissan Altima while it was parked at the hotel, and Letitia was recorded driving back to the spot in Palmer Lake where she had Gannon, just north of Colorado Springs. Now in the arrest affidavit, they have a little bit of information on that day along with a map. But first, there's a few things to point out. On the morning of January 28th, the day after Gannon was murdered, Letitia took her Tiguan to the airport. 
She then parked it and then rented a vehicle to drive Al back home in it. She made up the ridiculous story that she didn't want to put too much mileage on her vehicle because it was a lease. So later that day, she had Harley drop her back off at the airport. She then grabbed her Tiguan, headed out that evening to Douglas County. Now the Tiguan had evidence of blood in it. And guess what was in or who was in that Tiguan? Gannon. So she goes to Douglas County and disposes of evidence. The next day on January 29th, she headed into the sheriff's office two hours too late for her interview, but not without washing her Tiguan first. And then she does her interview and her vehicle was seized that day. Fast forward to two days later, here we are, she's taking her aunt's Ultima and heading to the same area. Now the GPS tracker tracked her movements in Douglas County for around an hour. And in the arrest affidavit, it says, I submit a reasonable theory for the fact Letitia returned to this area based on the information presented in this affidavit as follows. Letitia disposed of Gannon's remains at nighttime and likely was nervous about the location she chose and may not have even remembered exactly where she dumped Gannon's remains. Investigators believe that on January 31st, 2020, she went back to the area to view the area while sunlight was available to ensure no evidence was viewable from the road, to ensure his remains were adequately covered to prevent detection and to see if any law enforcement was in the area. But here's where it gets even sketchier. Letitia rented another van and apparently her aunt didn't want to rent the other van any longer or for a longer time so Letitia rented a new one. Now they had to transfer items from one van to the other because remember that's where Letitia and Harley's belongings were was in that other van. So Dakota helped Letitia transfer those items into the new van and guess what was there? A big green suitcase. That same suitcase that Gaddon was in and would be later found over a bridge 1400 miles away in Florida. Her brother asked Letitia about the suitcase. He noted it was particularly heavy for Letitia. He asked her if he could help her and she said no. He noticed though that she was struggling quite a bit with it. He asked what was in it and she told him it was some softball stuff. Now notable when Dakota was testifying about this, he was choking back the tears. He said he didn't feel right about the suitcase. It felt like it was too heavy for Letitia and something just didn't seem right. During that process, did you see the defendant with a rather large suitcase? Um, it was, yes, sir. I seen it with a lot of suitcases. Well, there was a lot of suitcases on there. Was there one that kind of stood out to you? Yes, sir. Tell the jury about that. Why did it stand out to you? Because it looked like she was struggling with it. So she was struggling with it and then just picture that now she actually has to put it over the bridge as well or over the barricade and toss it over. Now, while on the stand, Dakota talked about the relationship with his dad, who was Letitia's stepdad. And in opening statements, the defense hammered home about Letitia being abused as a child, that she had a terrible childhood, and that her mother wasn't much of a mother. The defense stated that Letitia was abused over and over by her stepdad. But Dakota had a few opposing thoughts. First, he did say that his father had a drinking problem and was an alcoholic. And Dakota was three years old, he said, when his dad gave him drinks until he passed out. He also said that his dad was in the Air Force and was in the war. And when he got back, he had some problems. And he also stated that his dad later died and got hit by a car. Now, Letitia used this story about him getting hit by a car as a newer story and told the vice principal that she couldn't go to work the day that Gannon was killed because her stepdad got hit by a car. When in reality, he died in 2004 and Dakota said it was on his seventh birthday. Now, the prosecution asked about the relationship between Letitia and the stepdad. And in my last video, I talked about the opening statements or one of my previous videos. I talked about the opening statements in the trial and how the defense is cl claiming that Letitia lived a lifetime of abuse. One that Al Stokes seemed surprised about on the stand and even Letitia's brother seemed surprised as well. 
He said he doesn't know anything about anything unusual between Letitia and his dad and that he would think that their mom would have said something. He said that their mother was a great mom and protected the kids. He sounded quite defensive when he talked about that. And also in the defense's opening statement, they claimed that Letitia's mom wasn't much of a mother contrary to what Dakota said. But there was an interesting remark, and that was that Letitia would leave knives for her brother to protect herself. So I found that interesting. And let me know your thoughts below about that. But Dakota was asked if he ever knew Letitia to have a serious mental illness. He said no, but he did say that she had OCD and joked that they called it obsessive cleaning disorder because she liked to have things clean. He was asked also about different name preferences. If Letitia ever went by the name Harmony or Jasmine or Maria or if Letitia ever spoke in a Spanish accent he said no Harley was also asked these questions and there was even more names that was said he said do you have an opinion if your sister has a capacity to know from right from wrong he said I thought she did and he said that you know she's too smart then he was asked, what do you think about the plea of not guilty by reason of insanity and he said I believe that's the only way she did it at that time but he says, when we found out where he was found, meaning Gannon, at that point I knew she did it because when I saw that suitcase and asked her about that suitcase, it was just funny to me. I thought she snapped and went crazy, but now, no. It just, that, at that point I knew she did it because of, when I seen that suitcase and asked her about it, she just had funny to me. And yeah, I thought she might have snapped and went crazy. Okay. But now, no. He said that in the beginning he felt like Letitia would never do this. He was crying again, as I said, while he was on the stand and the outburst of saying, why Letitia? He said he wanted to come out to help Letitia and support her because at first they thought that she was wrongly accused and thought it was something that she would never do. Let me know your thoughts below about his testimony. Check out what Letitia's daughter had to say right here. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.